Hey everyone, Amelia here. Let's talk about the Splatoon 3 update cycle and how I think it can be improved. Um, I just feel like there's a lot of talk a little bit with the new update. Uh, what is it? One No, 2.1.0 and how, yeah, it's not a great update. Um, and then people are starting to realize, hey, the update cycle for Splatoon 3 kind of sucks. Um, and it's just not a good update cycle. Um, and it can lead to the game getting pretty stale, pretty boring, pretty quickly. Or just in general, the game just falling off, possibly. So uh, let's try to fix that. Um, we're also going to discuss not just the update cycle of the game. We're going to talk about uh, patches a little bit. Uh, we're also going to talk about events as well in like its own section after this. Um, with like Splatfest and Big Run, how those can be improved. Um, I know a big person been talking about this. Well, I thought Negus did, but then I put up the channel and it's like, I, I swear I saw a video from Negus. Maybe it was this one, Shooter Privilege or Pros Ruining the Game. Um, but like, I swear I heard Negus talk about this. Another YouTube that comes to mind is like Rizone for uh, Splatoon. I'm probably spelling it wrong. Yeah, this one. Uh, I, I swear something was up with Rizone. I know Rizone talks a lot about Splatfest um, a bit. Um, so yeah. So I wanted to make this video talking about everything in terms of like just, I guess, updates. Uh, because I feel like no one has sat down and done this. Uh, I guess quick citations for the stuff used in this graphic, uh, if, if Edge will come back up. I just Googled like Splatoon 3 pattern, it took me here and I uh, downloaded it. I don't know if this site is legit, I was going to use that one. And then just the logo I got from here as well, and I just saved it, so yeah. I don't know where this is coming from, so. Oh, okay, just DeviantArt, cool. So yeah, that's my stuff um, that I used to make this, and then I have like splat font, splat font too, that's been installed on my computer forever. So yeah, sorry it does look a bit washed out. My display is uh, an HDR display. Anyways, credits are done, or uh, you know, uh, citations are done, let's get into this. So yeah, uh, basically, when right now, uh, the season comes out every three months, and with that new season, we get like a lot of new content. It's kind of insane how much stuff comes uh, in these updates. Like we get a new catalog, new gear. Well, kinda. I feel like the amount of new gear in these updates is small. I keep running into my shops for a bit uh, and I just keep running into like not much new gear where I'm constantly like the shops are just constantly sold out of gear and it's like oh and this happens pretty quick into the season uh i feel like and i'm not one to play this game a crazy amount recently like i i'm in co i used to be in college and we got out in like late december um but even before the break happened uh i was still finding you know that the shops are pretty much sold out all the time which was like great we get new balance we get a new balance update which now i haven't looked deeply into the balance update to splatoon 3 a bit um, but judging by a recent, um, patch, 1.2.0, uh, by the way, I'm recording this on January 20th, um, so this was very recent. Uh, it sounds like the seasonal balance patches might be more significant than your mid-season patch. Might be wrong, but, um, because I haven't looked back at season one, you know, the mid-season one patch and the season two patch to really see if they're bigger. Uh, but we're going to talk about balance patches as well uh, after this. Uh, your ranks reset, by the way. That's a little smaller thing that people might not realize. I remember people getting really upset, especially in the casual scene. Um, a lot of people feel like when their ranks reset, they just don't want to play the game. It's like, why should I grind to get my rank back? Especially how, where uh, the rank system isn't good in this game, where it's doing a lot of skill-based matchmaking um, and not even accounting for your Glico power. Um yeah, it's uh, not great. I feel like it's on the good and bad side. Like, I experienced the worst of it, but I think there is some good to the rank system. Um, but I can talk about that another day. We also get some quality of life features. Things like um, the song title in the bottom right-hand corner when you start a match. That was the big one that happened with, the, um, with Season 2. Um, I'm sure there's more that I just can't think of that existed. Oh, yeah, they added... Uh, little dots on the equip menu for for each page of weapons and gear and stuff. 
that was in Splatoon 2, but not in Splatoon 3, which is really odd. Um, finally, they added it, which makes so much more sense. Um, now, in Season 2, we got two new maps, but I'm going to up it to three because it makes a bit more sense. Uh, we also got three new weapons, those being uh, the Splattershot Nova, the Snipe Rider 5H, and the Big Swig Roller. Now, they weren't great new weapons. They're pretty underpowered, but there's something. And then we also got a ton of returning weapon kits. I had to shorten it for space. Um, I don't know the exact number, but it, it was a lot of kits. Um, normally, though, in Splatoon 2's update cycle, uh, every it's when the game first came out, uh, July 21st, or somewhere in late July 2017, um, you, you, the game got updates every week, adding one new weapon. And then at the end of the month, I believe you'd get a new map, or maybe it was like the beginning of each month. I don't know. Um, and then after update 3.0 because yeah this went on for that long uh they made a big change to the game one of it being with its update cycle they introduced x rank which meant things are now working on a monthly basis so instead of getting weekly weapons we're now getting four weapons every at the end of each month as as long bleh, as well as um one map and that's how splatoon 2 went it also made some other changes with Splatfest. It added the clout system you know from Splatoon 3, normal and pro matches. It changed the um, the point, the way like points got calculated and stuff. Uh, you know, the scoring system. It did a lot of things to the game. Um, it also showed Aqua expansion. So a lot happened in 3.0 um, and it put Splatoon 2 in the right direction. Um, so yeah. Uh, so in terms of just, like, how that was done, I feel like once that update hit 3.0, Splatoon 2 was perfect. Um, they also did do events, uh, Splatfest every month in Splatoon 2, like, always. Um, and I believe, I'm not sure if it was after 3.0, but at a certain point, they started doing, um, event-themed Splatfests, like your Spring Fest, Frosty Fest... Final Fest was the last one in 2019, the last official Splatfest. Um, you can argue the Mushroom vs. Star was, but I'm getting over the point. Stuff like that happened. Um, I'm not going to talk about that right now. We'll get into it later when we talk about Splatfest. But yeah, I don't know if I said this earlier, <clears throat> but uh, I'm going to talk more about updates. I'm going to talk more about you know events, Splatfest, big runs, um, patches specifically. I'm going to have that at its own section. But right now... We're going to talk about the update cycle. So I guess everything, like, broadly. So yeah, that's how this is That's just how this is working. Uh, Splatoon 3, just a ton of new content, and then pretty much you get a mid-season patch about a month and a half in, and then a month and a half later, you get your new season, which is all of this again. Now, I found with the first season, pretty quickly, like, what, maybe a month later? I'd say probably about late October, I kind of felt that the season was getting a bit boring. I waited it out until season two to kind of say, right, was it worth it? And then now that we are back at the mid-season of season two of Splatoon 3, uh, yeah, I'm feeling it again. Now, it could be because I had winter break, be late December, um, and then since then my hours have over doubled in this game since launch, so... That could be a part of the reason why I'm feeling a bit burnt out. Or not burnt out, but like a bit like things are stale. Um, but yeah. So I want to fix that a bit. Now, pre-season 2, I thought scrap the season approach and do something different. But now that I've seen season 2 um, and seen like what the updates are for this game going to be like to an extent, I'm kind of sitting here like... There's some good to this seasonal approach. The new catalog that you get, your catalog level resets, you get a whole new 100 levels to complete. And I made the catalog really well in this game. Getting to level 100, while it takes a bit of grinding, it's not the most crazy thing for grinding in Splatoon. It's pretty easy to get to. Um, that's something cool. The rank resetting, while a lot of casuals don't like this, I think I talked about that a bit earlier. Um, if not, I'll just edit the, I'll edit it out. Um, I'll edit this out. The thing with casuals with rank resets is they feel like, why should I play the game after a new season if my rank's gonna go down and I have to grind to get back up to my rank? If players are in B minus rank, as an example, 
and they get pushed back down to I think what C plus or C rank, one of the two. Um, they're not gonna play with players that are that not so good at the game. Not to discourage players who are C rank. Um, my friend who's in C rank actually has a problem where they're they're good at the game. It's just their teammates aren't because they're in C rank, but they're matching them against higher ranked opponents. Uh, so it's kind of a bit of a mess. So, and it's kind of preventing them from moving forward in the rank system. One of the flaws there. Um, but yeah, casuals just don't like their ranks resetting. It's good for the higher level. Maybe not so much on the lower side of things. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a controversial thing between the competitive and casual side. Um, that's a big cool thing. I like the quality of life features. While Splatoon 2 did have quality of life features that were just as big as this when their big new versions came out. To have it be predictable, uh, you know, every three months, it's, it's just nice to have. Um, yeah, that's like a lot of the good stuff with the seasons that, ex that exist in this game. Um, it, it's just great to have. Um, and I like how predictable it is. I, I think the seasonal approach can pan out very well with these tweaks. So let's get into those tweaks real quick. So um, one of the big issues with this is that, you know, the game gets stale pretty quickly by the next month. So, here's a quick way to fix it. We have a bunch of returning weapon kits. We, oddly enough, have three new weapons and three new maps. Now, 2.0 is two new maps. I think in the future they'll up it to three. If it's two, it can fit in this approach a little awkwardly. But, let's, uh, let's do a little tweaking real quick to this approach, right? Probably shouldn't copy and paste this, but uh, we will. So what I'm going to do is go back to Splatoon 2's approach with monthly updates. But the thing is, these monthly updates aren't going to be as substantial. Can I not edit this, please? There you go. So quality of life features will still be in the original season. Ranks resetting, obviously. Um, balance update, possibly. Maybe. Um, and then new gear and new catalog. Yeah, all that can stay to a new season. And then we'll put uh, month one right here. Whoops, month, well, month two of the new season. All right, so uh, we're gonna take this and do one new map instead of three. We're gonna have one new weapon. And then we're going to do um, we're going to have to space this out and do one of three of the batch of returning weapons. And then over here, we're going to change it so that we get one new map and one new weapon. And then I should change this to two thirds actually. And then here, two third, one third of returning weapons and then pretty much probably should have just uh deleted this whole text box shouldn't i have and then copy paste not that so i think this is pretty much what I would like to see from the game. It makes it where, you know, your seasons feel like a big, impactful new update. Let me add a question mark to these, though, because it's kind of up in the air. Um, it makes it so when your season begins, it feels like this giant, impactful new update. Um, you know, you're still getting a new catalog. You're still getting new gear. You're still getting a balance update, um, your ranks reset, quality of life features. Like, there's things to make the seasonal beginning um, iconic. Let me say it that way, uh, because I was just reading through all of this. You know, your new catalog is going to be exclusive to a season start. The gear um, possibly could. You could put them in each month, but I feel like it's better to start a new season with it, with the catalog. Um your ranks resetting, your quality of life features are probably the biggest thing of these new updates. And then you get a little bit of new content, you know? Now, I think the biggest thing I should say about um, new content 
released on the on the front of the entire season now don't do it where you start a new season and you only show off this stuff and then month two you show off this stuff and then then month three we show off that stuff that's not a i don't like that approach i prefer the approach where when the season begins when you show off that trailer for the new season that you show off everything in the entire season you know and uh, then make the announcement that hey this is what's coming each month or something um how you clarify that i don't know um but it's a lot more easier to clarify it now though because you could just say when the season begins show off the trailer and yeah um but yeah i like the idea of breaking it up because now the game's getting updated constantly and um it just feels more lively and all it would take is hiding back this content because like right now the seasonal content is clearly ready when the season begins so all you have to do is just have it hold it back for an extra month or two and launch it you know uh while it could be a bit problem problematic for the new weapons in the game um for example we saw the splatter shot nova and the big squig roller um get to get um you know updated or not updated but you know get pat get uh buffed and nerfed and stuff uh, mainly actually mainly buffs uh that would be a problem with launching one each month um because only one of them would be able to get the buff but uh yeah but i think having balance updates which we'll get to in a, actually we'll get to updates in a sec why i'm doing it this way and i put a question mark and i'll we'll talk about that for a second um we'll, we'll wait for that real quick but uh, yeah, I just think showing it off all at once and then scattering it out throughout the season is just a much better approach. It gets people excited for what's coming in the future. Whereas instead of sitting there being like, I don't know, what, like we only know right now one third of what's happening in the season. Or more than, I guess a little more than that because you have these other things that only happen. Well, not this. Um, at the start, but yeah. I think this is a much better approach. It tells you what's happening. You're not left guessing for the season. And, uh, yeah. What else do I want to talk about here real quick? Um, I don't think much else outside of these updates. So, uh, if I, I might bounce back and talk about anything else that I feel like. Oh, yeah. Um, speaking of that, the new maps were an example. Like, it'd be cool if they show them off at the beginning of the season, right? In the trailer. And then they put it, put in one per month. But what if it's just multiplayer? Where it's just, you can't play it. What if it was still accessible through recon like the map that's in month three you can play in recon when the season begins but you just don't get to see it in multiplayer until month three that's an idea uh i also didn't even mention samurai in this um you can tie samurai into the updates as well maybe put um i don't know what happened with samurai in the newest season but i believe they added a couple new maps you can divide that up per um you know per month and stuff uh, it might be a bit trickier too, though, because it's Salmon Run, but yeah, uh, it's up to the devs, really, and what happens. I don't have space to even put it here, so yeah, and just other aspects that get updated. Real quick, let's, uh, not real quick, but let's just move on to balance updates. Uh, so the reason why these have question marks is one of the biggest problems with the patch updates to the Splatoon 3, well, there's a couple things that's wrong with them. Um, they're very infrequent. And it's pretty predictable, which is good and bad. Um, it's pretty much at the start of a season and then halfway through the season. The problem with this is that they're just pretty predictable. Uh, and they're not coming when they're needed to be. So, for example, if anywhere between when the season begins and right after the season starts as a new meta and it's a big problem, let's say, your mid-season patch comes up to address it, but it's not for like a month and a half later. So either anything that's left unaddressed in this balance update from the start of the season, you have to wait until the mid-season patch to get uh, addressed, which is a long time to live with the meta. Um, that's like a month and a half away, almost two months, etc. Um, Wasp Platoon 2 usually had balance updates, what, about every month, I think? Uh, probably even less, it felt like. It felt like they were happening constantly in that game. Yeah, a month and a half is a long time to wait. Even then, um, a lot of the problems with Splatoon 3 just aren't being addressed. Crab tank meta and so forth. Or they're over-addressing. Oh yeah, Brellas. Uh, the class of Brellas. 
um, just isn't being addressed and how they need it fixed. Slot Machine Machines hitbox, I don't know if they fixed that yet, but I, I feel like people are still talking about it. I can go on, I just can't think of anything right now, but there's a lot of things in this game that need to be touched that aren't being touched right now. The biggest one being Crab Tank meta. Um, that's its own thing, though. Um, but TLDR, I don't think we've seen this Splatoon meta be as problematic as Crab Tank as the Crab Tank meta. I'll talk about it later in, like, at the end, I guess, or something. Um, but putting balance patches more of... I guess every month gives them more of an opportunity to fix the game. Um, and one of the big problems with the updates right now is there's not enough changes happening to the game. They're being way too conservative with their updates. They're trying not to overbuff or over nerf anything, make things too powerful, make things not as less powerful. At the same time, we're seeing new weapons come out that are just very underpowered. Um, the brand new weapons to the game, Big Swig, Snipe Rider, and um, Splattershot Nova. They're just very underpowered. I mean, I guess the devs credit, they'd rather launch the weapon being weaker um, and then buffing it in updates, but they're being very conservative with those buffs at the same time, so it's kind of like, you see the problem here? And the updates are coming a lot longer than you would think. You'd think an update for the weapon would come maybe at most a month later, but it's like a month and a half later, and it's like... It's not a quick update like you'd think it would be like in Splatoon 2. How it was like, you know, a, a weapon would come out. Let's say it was Ballpoint as a good example. When the Ballpoint Swatling came out, that weapon was very, very powerful. or was really, really powerful um, and, and stuff. And the next update that came out to the game, I don't know when it was, but it fixed it. And it felt like a pretty quick time that they addressed the concern of Ballpoint being powerful. And now it's, then it, you know, became, I wouldn't say bad, but it, it went pretty well. Um, but there's been other situations, like with the tri slosher meta in the early days of Splatoon 2, where things got over-nerfed, uh, where a tri slosher kind of got its damage reduction, and then they had to slowly bring it back up to a much better state at, in the end of the game. Uh, so I feel like constant updates could help the game, uh, but at the same time, if it's needed. Um, and I feel like having more opportunities to update the game would kind of fix the problem of being a bit conservative. It can let you make some bolder moves, but maybe, you know, it can let them do what they want to do. Because right now it feels like they want to do some things or they recognize some problems, but they're kind of sitting there like, how do we fix this? Um, yeah. Well, I'll talk about the current patch as well uh, in a moment. But, yeah. Well, let's just do that now, actually, because with new with updates being every month, though, it allows you just more time, trial and error. I don't know. What, what do you all think? I guess that's the best thing to do. I think maybe monthly updates might help the game, but if it's not needed, don't do it. I guess that's the best thing to do. Um, because this is a very recent topic of mine to, to think about. Um, how do we fix the update cycle for the game in terms of balance updates? So yeah. Um, anyways, let's talk about the current um, update to the game. Or I'm not going to pull up patch notes or anything. But... The biggest problem with the current game's meta is just the crab tick meta is so crazy. This meta, I don't know when it began, but it's existed since season two began, um, which is, it's nuts that it never got addressed in. It existed before season two, actually, but when season two started, it just never got touched. The mid-season patch came out recently, and crab tank got a little slap on the wrist, but not really, because you can use a special power-up to just do the same thing. So it's not really, uh, it didn't really get touched uh, again. And it's been like, what, I guess three months? I don't know. It's been at least a month and a half, I can tell you that. And uh, the Crab Tank meta is getting very problematic. Um, crab Tank meta is basically everyone's playing a Crab Tank weapon, specifically the Splash Automatic, and I'll get to that in a sec. Um, people are running, what, two, three splashes on a team, Splash Automatics. Um, it used to be one sloshing machine or two sloshing machines and there has to be splash automatics, but yeah, they're pretty much your only weapons there. Now, sloshing machine did get a, uh, a big nerf. Um, Keo actually recently put out a video of, uh, a, a funeral, uh, to the sloshing machine. That was pretty funny. Um, but yeah. So, uh, you know, it's like they're over nerfing the sloshing machine, 
but they're not even touching the uh, the crab tank or the splash matic really is the problem. I think in terms of the recent update of what it means to the crab tank meta is that, I mean, we saw a lot of crab tank weapons get their points for special reduced. The dualies got their points for special reduced by uh, 10 points, as well as the Splattershot Pro, the vanilla, um, and those are all crab tank weapons. Um, they also buffed Tri-Strike, I feel like a bit too much. Um, I want to see how that pans out because I feel like it's good and bad. Um, I like how one try strike can shred stuff, but I do feel like it's a bit too powerful. The fact that it just like shreds a bubble, uh, a big bubbler is a bit of a problem. Um, but like for crab tank, it's great. The biggest issue and concern with try strike at least is that it's, uh, just you're not mobile you're just stuck in human form and i feel like uh yeah you need to be able to go in the squid form and stuff just be a bit more versatile with it i feel like um it's a big needed while the radius got buffed and i like that the damage is controversial um yeah we'll see how that pans out but i i, I just feel like what the whole idea for this update was um, I mean, they did mention this part as well at the end. Um, one, fixing weapons where main power up in Splatoon 2 kind of made them a bit broken, but it kind of helped the weapon a bit, um, if that makes sense. Um, for example, Nautilus got some extra shots. I believe it got like a four shots extra from it. Um, it's, it's similar to what main power up must have done to it. I know Bamboozler, it added some ink efficiency up to it so it can get, get a couple more shots out. Um, I don't know. Apparently, it's something to do with main power up. Um, but the big thing is that I feel like they're trying to put some more crab tank weapons. Like, hey, play, play these other crab tank weapons just to kind of like get you to go there. Um, because I think right now, they're trying to look at the current meta and be like, right, do we need to fix crab tank? Do we need to make a, do we make a, need to, bleh, do we need to make a big nerf to crab tank or to splash o -matic? Um deeper in that issue is like yeah we can change crab tank i'm sure they can nerf crab tank it's just the problem with nerfing crab tank is that their other crab tank weapons aren't being played right now the only one is splash um the reason behind this i don't know if the devs know is that the splash is just the better crab tank weapon and while they're trying to make the other options better and eh, points for special probably isn't going to help in the competitive standpoint especially 10 points for special um, when you're looking at a splash matic and you're trying to make a weapon that's just as good as it, it's not going to help. But I digress. Um, I still think they're trying to put some weapons out there for, you know, for people to consider for crowd tank um, to kind of see where that goes. But it's also from the splash matic standpoint, the splash matic is pretty similar to Splatoon 2. Uh, while you can buff it and nerf it, well, mainly nerf it, um, the problem with nerfing it is that this weapon is pretty similar to Splatoon 2. So if you buff the splash o -matic, one, is it still going to be played because Crab Tank's on it? Um, and if Crab Tank's unchanged, people are still going to play it, you assume, you know? Uh, and it, But then it also makes this divide between the Splatoon 2 Splash versus Splatoon 3 Splash. When in reality, the, weapon, the main weapons are the exact same. But yet in this game, it's just much better because of its kit. Does that mean we have to punish the main weapon because its kit's so good? I don't think so. I'm not saying let's not nerf splash o but I feel like the main weapon was the same as Splatoon 2 where it was pretty fine. I mean, yeah, it was up there in terms of being a good weapon, but uh, in this game, it's just its kit's so good. We're seeing other weapons with really good kits and pretty good main weapons that just aren't being the spotlight because they don't counter crab well. Why should we nerf splash? Um... But I, I still feel like it does deserve a nerf at the same time. So, because how else do we fix the problem? Uh, I think that's the hardest dilemma probably the devs are facing. How do we fix this meta? Um, when the main weapon's the same as Splatoon 2. And, yeah. If they give a slap on the wrist the Crab Tank, well, I shouldn't say a slap on the wrist, more like a heavy nerf the Crab Tank, how is it going to affect the other Crab Tank weapons? The dualies, the, what is it? L3 or H3, one of the two has Crab Tank on it. Um, Curling Bob Crab Tank. There's so many Crab Tank weapons that aren't being played right now because they're just not good, nowhere near as good compared to Splash. 
But how is it going to affect those weapons? Are they going to be less of an option um, because of Crab Tank? W what's up here? Like, how do we fix this, you know? I think that's what the, I think that's, and I think that's what the devs are looking at and trying to fix and, like, trying to figure out how to do. The problem is when it's been this long of just no updates whatsoever or nothing addressing the problems, uh, yeah, it's uh, a bit like... Really? You have all this time, and I'm sure they have a plethora, plethora, like so much data on this because it's been so long. Why are you just taking such a minimal approach to this issue right now, at least? It's like, you have the data. You just need to come to a conclusion. So, I think the big thing is that they just don't want to tune things too much. They don't want to nerf Crab Tank too hard and they don't want to buff it too much, or not really buff anything, it's more of nerfing at that point, but they don't want to nerf things too much, they don't want to buff things too much, because of the way the updates are, you know, mid-season updates, one, one and a, every one and a half months, with not much happening in them. So, yeah. But at the same time, I feel like in the current update, they hit sloshing machine a little too hard, a lot of people are saying, this could be, you know, recency bias of, oh shit, 10% or, you know, 10% uh, efficiency, ink efficiency reduction on top of 10 points of special. That's a lot of change to it. When in reality, it's like one slosh less and 10 points for special more. Not going to change the game too much, uh, like practical, practically. Uh, but stats wise, yeah, they seem pretty big. That could be it. Um, it could be actually hit a bit hard, who knows, but, but I also feel like Tri-Strike was buffed way too much, 50% damage, um, that, that's a big difference, you know, that's a big buff, the Tri-Strike, on top of the 10, the 10% 10 radius increase, so it's like, what's up with the whole trying to be conservative here on your buffs and nerfs, you know, so it's a bit strange. Um, so I feel like just going back to the old format just worked better. While there were things being over nerfed, over buffed, they got a response happened pretty quickly, it felt like. So trying to do monthly updates, yeah, I feel like it could fix the problem. Uh, the reason why I'm a little bit unsure, though, is because, you know, who knows how the devs are going to deal with that. That's like the one new component you actually have to think about with this entire thing. Uh, if we don't include the balance updates, things are pretty same as going, you know, just hold back on the new update content. Um, so yeah, I feel like with this approach, the game wouldn't get a stale super quick. Um, but it's not to the point where, you know, your not season updates are feeling lackluster or nothing at all. Like these updates feel like an update like a decent update but the season when the new when the new season starts you're getting a lot of new stuff like enough to feel like a big new update a new season etc so that's what i like about this approach um what do you all think leave it at that all right let's move on to the events so there's two new events in Splatoon 3. Well, one is new. Uh, Splatfest and Big Run. Let's talk about Splatoon 2 Splatfest real quick. So up until, I believe, 3.0, um, which I, I don't remember when 3.0 happened, but I believe it was somewhere around a year of the game coming out, maybe less than. Splatfest before then were 24 hours. And you got a new shifty state. So every new Splatfest, you get a new shifty station, which is uh, a new map, pretty much, using single player concepts that weren't used in multiplayer, if that makes sense. Um, for example, um, they'd use a lot of rol roloniums, that little like circular thing you'd hit in story mode and then expand out into a thing to swim on, like a straight line to swim on. Um, stuff like that they might they, have, they had one that used a lot of gushers um they had one with like these domes that would come down at certain time frames and trap parts of the map away that you couldn't access once the dome went down and 
there was one in the middle and then there was one on the left and right side of the map um, closer to each team spawn a little bit it was kind of farther far away but it was a pretty cool of a map um, each Splatfest introduced a new shifty station and it would be added to the map rotation so now there's three maps uh, in each rotation um, you know your two multiplayer maps and a shifty station which is pretty cool and that was Splatfest. There is a bit more to Splatfest as well. Um, let me see if I can pull up a video real quick. Splatoon 2 Splatfest. Well, I misspelled it, but that's all right. Uh, we'll get to the themes in a sec, but I don't know. Splatfest news. Jeez, I can't spell. Here's a good one to look at. Now this is purely um, the plaza side of things and stuff. Yeah, let me turn on the sound. So this is the war premiere, uh, similar to Splatoon 3's Blackfest web premiere. It had to happen right, right before the game came out. But um, just to give you a sense of how things happened, you have your start screen, but the news would be on the stage. This doesn't happen in Splatoon 3, which is a big shame in my opinion. Um, they'd talk about the news, they'd show you, like, there's a whole TV, you know. It was really cool. Um, and then the, the main hub had, like, these lasers and stuff, that was, that was pretty cool. Um, I feel like Splatoon 3 is a bit on the, like, listen. The music, wait, let me stop it. The music feels, like, full, like, you can hear the music 100%. Uh, whereas in Splatoon 3, it feels a bit muffled, if that makes sense. Um, specifically in the second half of Splatfest, though. But, um, just stuff like that just didn't get retained. Um, that would be nice to have. Um, but Shifty Station was a big thing. I mean, you could argue that they used up all the multiplayer, not multiplayer, all the single player concepts, uh, for Shifty Stations. So bringing them back would be a bit, like, impossible. Um, not bringing them back, but making new ones. But I also feel like at the same time, um, that with Shifty Stations, like, there's concepts that you can explore, um, that are also in a single player, like Shulker Blocks and stuff. Uh, but at the same time, there was some that weren't even on single player concepts. Like that dome one I mentioned from Chicken vs. Egg, the, the one with the domes. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. Um... That one, like, that wasn't a multiplayer con- That wasn't a single-player concept. That was brand new. So, it'd be cool to see. See if we can find it here. Yeah, this one. Oh, well. Tools, size, large. Yeah, it was like this one. Um... Open image and new tab, maybe? So you have this dome right here. Can I zoom in? Yeah. So you have a main dome right here uh, in mid, and that would go down like towards the end of the match. And then you have a dome back here in the uh, left and right sides. You can see how the team that spawns around here, it's easier to get to. Um, that would close down first, the ones on the sides. And then you get like a jump pad in here to take you back to spawn. Um, but once this these domes are down, you, you can't do anything about it. So yeah, you, it's pretty much locked in. Like this wasn't seen in the single player at all. Um, so I feel like you can just explore more in these concepts and do it personally. So yeah. So Splatfish just don't feel the same as Splatoon 2 did. Um, and then on top of that, they had Event Splatfest where the main hub of uh, Inkopolis Square, I think it was in Splatoon 2. Yeah, Splatoon 1 was Plaza if I'm correct. Um, they would change they would add a bunch of decorations up for like christmas halloween stuff like that um for example frosty fest where is it images maybe i'll grab you to look up images let's do uh here so they would have like a whole new start screen you could see frosty fest they have these decorations, they have a bunch of snow everywhere, it'd be snowing, it's a bit more brighter outside. Yeah, they even changed, when, if, when you get in the maps for a bit, 
you can see the news being on the stage here how that would go uh do they actually show it in that um well no but they added um they added a whole new like jingle to the start of a match and stuff it's crazy then there's also final fest um these um these events went on or these splatfest went on for uh two days it's similar to our current splatfest but without the whole halftime report and stuff like that um so yeah that that was cool we don't have the events in splatoon 3 um people are speculating because of the regional difference uh so in splatoon 2 there were a lot of splatfests that were different uh in different regions uh in the pirate battle section splatoon 2 you can play as you can set it to a splatfest or four battle and select your theme and that it includes themes that were only in like japan or the uk and stuff uh, which is pretty cool because they had their own ink color as well so you wouldn't get to experience every splatfest in splatoon 2 without the private battles so yeah and even then you don't get the whole splatfest experience but i digress uh so original splatfest were good and bad on the good side of regional Splatfest, um, we have things like whatever theme is being picked is tailored to the region. So its performance is going to be pretty good for the region for the most part. I mean, yeah, there's some that happened that, you know, you had popularity-wise one team that would just dominate over the other. But at least it was in tune to the region where it probably made sense, I would hope. Whereas on the downside of having uh, everyone play the same Splatfest, well, the recent Splatfest uh, was uh, Taste Sensation, Sweet versus, I was about to say Salty, uh, Sweet versus Sour versus Spicy. I know I'm saying it in the wrong order. But the thing with that Splatfest was that almost no one was on Team uh, Sour, whereas... Um, Whereas Team Sweet had like over 50% of the votes. My wallpaper usually would tell me, but it's been a while since then, so it doesn't. Uh, Rizone, in their Splatfest video on that Splatfest, talked about how having a Team Salty instead of Team Sour would have made a big new difference. Um, and would have been a bit more tailored to the North American region, or just the Western scene of Splatoon. So that's a downside of... Uh, regional Splatfest is that everyone has to play the same thing and people are saying that because of um, everyone being in like some regions don't celebrate Christmas for example we're not going to see a Frosty Fest because not every region is going to celebrate Christmas so they won't get the Frosty Fest I don't know if the Frosty Fest though was that way because I, I thought everyone saw had a Frosty Fest but I don't know for the final fest though it was a three day Splatfest though and they went all out on it, but that's that's a different that's a different thing. We'll talk about that when Splatoon three gets its final fest or is about to, because it was a big deal. And I don't think Splatfest should go that hard until the end, maybe, um, maybe more like an in between. Um, but yeah. So, Splatfest and Splatoon three uh, are pretty much just. Uh, Two-day events, uh, which is great. I love. I really like that. Uh, but the big problem with Splatoon 3 Splatfest is that the first half is your typical Splatfest, right? Which is fine. Uh, just typical 4v4, turf war, Splatfest themed. Um, and uh, what else? 4v4, turf war. The main hub is different, which is pretty cool. So your idols, you know, uh, Shiver Fry and Big Man are kind of rotating around the entire uh, hub of Splatsville, um, singing their own solos of songs. Um, and then once halftime hits, um, in the middle, I wouldn't say in the middle of Splatsville, but close enough, um, they're on this one giant parade float uh, doing Anarchy Rainbow, similar to how, you know, the uh, in Splatoon 2, how, um, what are they called? Pearly Marina were on a stage performing together like that but for the first half they're all kind of separated like splatoon 1 was splatoon 1 had um kelly and marine on like their own trucks on top of Let's see if i can pull it up oh 
Whoopsie. Didn't mean to pull up Squid Skulls video yet. It does just happen the gameplay. Um uh, Plaza. So sure you can see Callie on the left and Bree on the right, you know, that's how it was. So yeah. Um, so it kind of takes like a bit of both, which is cool. Um, that's not the bad side of Splatfest. Uh, the second half though, you get halftime results and, um, then you get like conch shells, uh, when the Splatfest begins actually, not, not then, but, uh, halftime report, you get it halfway through the Splatfest. It used to be that that report determines, uh, whoever won halftime would be the team of four in tricolor, the defending team, I think it is, or the, yeah, the defending team in tricolor, the team of four. But they've changed it recently where it's all random. And if you are matched on that same side, so if you're the team that won halftime report and you get um, a defending team in tricolor against the other two teams, you get a one point, everyone, whoever wins, gets a 1.5 times bonus. Uh, I guess for like clout and stuff. I don't know. So yeah, pretty cool. I like the new change uh, and it's a good start for Splatfest changes, but it just doesn't compare to Shifty Stations like at all. Uh, Tricolor also has its own singular map, uh, one map that gets updated for Tricolor for the whole three team thing, uh, 4v2v2. The team of four is in the middle of the map, you probably know this. So yeah, the big problem with Splatfest though, I'm just blanking on, the, on it right now, uh, they just don't live up to Splatoon 2 was like the one thing. Um, the whole Tricolor doesn't really compare to Splatoon 2 Shifty Station, especially in, like the new map, you know? And Tricolor as a mode, I feel like should be, people feel like should be its own mode always instead of just a Splatfest second half exclusive. Uh, it's also only in the second half, so it's like the first half just feels like a boring old Splatfest, which is fine, um, I feel like, but it's a bit on the weird side, I guess. It doesn't feel like anything much is happening in the first half. Um, but yeah. Um, I don't know, just Blackfests just don't have the impact they did in Splatoon 2. I know it's very nitpicky, but they just don't. Uh, it's also pro mode, uh, at least in Splatoon 3, I don't know about 2, doesn't have a purpose, I feel like, at all. Uh, because you get more rewards from playing in normal mode, uh, you get more towards your level, uh, your Splatfest rank, your Splatfest level, whatever, but also you get more clout, you just, in general, rewards are just more in uh in normal mode plus you get to play with your friends in normal mode the only reason why you would play pro mode which by the way uh is single only like you can only play in solo queue but it gives you a glico power which is the only reason you'd play pro mode and in terms of the overall results of a splat fest pro mode is like really insignificant it, more points matter towards normal than pro, um, which is very uh, strange. So why even play pro mode of turf four? Um, I could say you know there's no ranked in Splatfest, which would be nice to have, um, but we've been saying that since Splatoon two, Splatoon one. I don't know. So yeah, it'd be cool to happen though. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe in an update they'll bring it. In a big new update. So, yeah. Splatfest just feel very underwhelming. Uh, I mean, there's no themes like Frosty Fest, um, Splatoween. All this in total has just made Splatfest feel very... Meh. Not great. Um, which is very weird. Uh, and then, on top of that, the tray on top is Splatfest are every other month. Where they used to be every month. Which is uh, really dumb. Why are they every other month? Uh, you could argue Big Run. And yeah, that's a valid thing. But let's talk about Big Run as well. Because if Big Run is taking a Splatfest spot, it actually didn't used to. Splatfest before Big Run were just every other month. Why is Big Run so just... I don't know, it doesn't have the same impact as a Splatfest does. I mean, it makes sense. This is the third game. Um, this is the third time we've seen Splatfest, like, third game at Splatfest, so it makes sense for them to be on a much 
bigger scale. Uh, but it's like you're replacing a Splatfest every month with Big Run. So it kind of needs to live up to it, I feel like. But it doesn't. Uh, Big Run's similar to Splatfest, 48 hours. But there's no halftime, any of that jazz. It's just Big Run, which is just Salmon Run on a multiplayer map, but it is harder, which is pretty cool. And it, it's really interesting of a concept, uh, but I don't feel like it goes hard enough. It doesn't, like, you don't have your own dedicated conch shells uh, like you do in Splatfest. Um, and it's just, like, if Splatfest were just 4v4 turf for the entire time for 48 hours, and that's about it. Like, even then, the magical theme of a splat fest of how the whole uh splatsville square is just all like in a festival party mood is pretty cool uh whereas seeing it in a post-apocalyptic setting while it's cool it's not like uh it's not as special as a splat fest is um and it's just salmon run i mean you could argue though that splat fest is just turf war but they have that special feeling to them of a splat fest it's also you get to play the stage at night i mean i guess you can take it to big run so you get to play with the sky red which is cool um but let's talk about that for a sec too i feel like with uh big run the whole concept is oh the salmon this what salmon are invading the city uh i think it would be cool if that red sky was in all the multiplayer maps because salmon run is kind of its own side mode uh, while in Splatoon 3, I will say I don't agree with that statement. I feel like it's its actual secondary mode now with the updates they made to it. It feels like a dedicated mode to the game instead of a side mode like it was in Splatoon 2, where it felt like it was in Splatoon 2. Um, I just feel like Salmon Run is just its own thing. But with Big Run, I feel like it would help a bit more and really convince people to play Big Run if... Um, if the sky in the multiplayer maps and all of them was red, it may not be to the extent at which the map that's being invaded on that you play in Big Run is, but at least to the level of the main hub or something. Like, maybe not as dramatic, but something smaller. I, I don't know. Uh, just to really make you want to play Big Run, you know? Um, yeah. Like, and then just, like, the whole theme of, right, now you have to collect... Uh, the top 5% of eggs, but you don't know what that is at the same time, is kind of like a weird choice. It could be because of the first big run um, and the way it was, but it, it doesn't feel like it has enough content to it. Uh, there's no sneak peek to big runs like Splatfest. Splatfest have a whole uh, month of a sneak, not month, <laughs> a whole week of a sneak peek period to collect Kong shells is pretty cool. I like it. I, I do want to talk about that real quick too. I meant to do that earlier with Splatfest. I keep forgetting to talk about the sneak peek though the problem with sneak peek is that uh you announce a splatfest so early now that it's like once the splatfest hits when it's time for a splatfest it just feels very minor it just feels like yep this was announced like three weeks ago like almost a month ago it's it's not like crazy whereas in splatoon 2 the time from announcement to the actual splatfest was so quick uh, it wasn't crazy quick, but when you got to the Splatfest, it felt impactful. Like, it felt like, oh my god, it's a Splatfest. Wow. Like, I don't know. It just felt good to get there. Uh, whereas in Platoon 3, it just kind of feels meh because we've known about it for, like, what, at this point, usually three weeks or so? Uh, or a month? The Pokemon Splatfest, they revealed that, like, way too early. So, yeah, it's a bit on the problematic side because, like, on one hand, you want to do it where you want to reveal it where people have no time to plan for the sneak peek, plan for the actual event. But on the other side of things, you still want that wowing factor. I don't think they're hitting that. I feel like in order to get there, you have to reveal it right before the sneak peek, like a day prior. But at that point, you can't plan for it. It's like, so it's a bit weird. It could be, you know, the jump to Splatoon 2 to Splatoon 3. Just, you know, the fact that it's been, what, I think five years or so. Um, and how we're just accustomed to things. It could be the same in both games. The time period is just, uh, we're just used to it. Uh, so it's kind of just feeling the same for those who played Splatoon 2. Um, but yeah. So, uh, in terms of like Big Run and Splatfest, man, it wasn't great. It's not great. I'll just say that. Um, I don't know how you improve things though. Um, but I know Rizzo started talking a bit about. Uh, Splatfest and Big Run in Splatoon 3 
So, or mainly mainly Splatfest. Um, I think they talked about the latest big run, but I feel like for big run, I need one more big run to be convinced that this is good. Um, and I hope they may change it to them regardless. Um, so yeah, it the revealing of the results doesn't feel as impactful as a Splatfest. On a Splatfest as well, you just like you go through category by category and you give points for the winner of each category, like a set amount of points. Um, while in Big Run, it just reveals the scores and that's it. So it's kind of like a bit of a downgrade, I guess. So why is this taking the place of a Splatfest, I feel like? I, I don't know how you put it into the mix of this, though. Like, I guess here, like, you still do monthly Splatfest, but then, you know, one month maybe at the start with the update, you'll get a Big Run closer to time or something. So you have, like, early in the month a Big Run and then late in the month you get a Splatfest or something. But then it gets to the point where you have a sneak peek for the Splatfest that's a week after, it's a week prior. So you only get, like, a week of no content. But then you also have the update sprinkled in with it. So it, it's a bit much. So, uh, how you balance this? Who the heck knows? <laughs> Maybe you do Splatfest monthly, and then um, maybe every other season in month two, you throw a big run in there. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the big issue with just the current problem, the current every other month with Splatfest and Big Run is that uh, when our season began for 2.0, we had a big run this season, which is great because it was new, but they made some massive tweaks to Splatfest. But we didn't get to see them until a month later in January. And it's like, wait, it took us a little over a month to see the new Splatfest uh, changes. When I feel like it should have been the same month. Um, and it makes it where when a Splatfest happens, it's like, man, it's been forever since a Splatfest. Which is good and bad. Um, if they're too infrequent, it's uh, it just feels like the game's not getting updated, as I mentioned. Um, or it just, it just doesn't feel that great. Or it, I don't know. It makes Splatfest feel good, but on the other side, it just doesn't feel great to have them be less frequent. Um, but if they're too frequent, which hasn't really happened, I do like them being every month, though. It's like a celebration that happens every month. It's pretty cool. But, uh, yeah. I think that covers most of my talk on Splatoon 3 stuff. We talked a bit about Crab Tank meta um, and how to like fix it a little bit or what's the going on with Crab Tank meta. Um, or just, you know, the whole balance update scheme of things. Proposed new update plan, and yeah. It's just the devs are working so slow on this game. I want to finally end it off with this. The devs are working so slow on this game that, like, it's just uh, a bit weird. <laughs> um, Splatoon is known for its updates. Splatoon 1 basically took the update cycle, and I wouldn't say standardized to the rest of the industry. Uh, it wasn't the first game to do it. But it's the game that took these, uh, the concept, the idea of updates and, you know, put it to everyone. Uh, or not put it to everyone, but they, they took the concept and made it mainstream and made everyone want to do it. Everyone and their mother in terms of game designers, I guess, or just games in general, want to do this. To the point where it became oversaturated. Splatoon 2 comes along and does it good. Um, and does it really well and just doesn't feel like the other games in terms of updates i don't know how to explain it i guess because it's not a free-to-play game that is micro transaction hell and stuff or it's just like yeah it's a bit crazy and then it dies pretty quickly like a month or so later because that's what every live service game i feel like goes nowadays um splatoon 2 did it right and then splatoon 3 is kind of fumbling a little bit on the update side of things but it can change and i, I think it, i hopefully think it will i mean the, the it's right here. Come on, Nintendo. Uh, you're so close to getting it right. Um, so, yeah. Um, but I also want to... Let's actually end it off like this. While there is some negatives to Splatoon 3, a lot of them actually, uh, not just this, but like the whole online connectivity side of Splatoon 3 isn't good, and I don't feel like it's going to get any better from what it currently is um, at all. Um, while there is negative to Splatoon 3, at the end of the day, the core gameplay is the best it's ever been, period. Uh, I'm gonna, I guess I can elaborate on this real quick. Uh, Splatoon 1, Broken Specials, Kraken, Bubbler, you know, the Invincibility Specials basically became meta 
and everything was just really broken. Um, especially back in like the early days when the game first came out. Splatoon 2 was the opposite direction. You had things like uh, missiles, like 170p missiles on every shooter in the game. Stingray, that's a uh, death laser through that can fire all the way across the entire map. Yeah, infinite range on that too, as well as missiles. Um, and if you know how to control a Stingray well, everyone's just pretty much dead. Um, or usually you use your teammates to get in with it, but I digress. Um, and, and then you have Ink Armor. Uh, it gave you an extra hit of uh, protection. But the problem is, is that just ruins the game with chargers. I mean, chargers are popping off right now because you can just encounter everything, um, which is great for the game. Uh, but Ink Armor was not, <laughs> for the obvious reason. It was the opposite of that. Uh, so yeah, it just made the game feel not great. And a lot of the specials just felt pretty weak, you know? Because Platoon 2 doesn't have a great endgame meta. Missile spam, armor spam, um, you get the point. Stingray, you know, the death laser. Um, yeah, not a great game in terms of meta. And then Splatoon 3 comes, and now it is the most interactive game in the series. The specials are pretty good while they need some changes. Um, you know, Crab Tank specifically needs nerfed and other specials. A lot of the game, I feel like, needs some tuning. But I feel like the gameplay still feels great outside of Crab Tank meta. Um, and that's, that's great. Like, this, even though we're in one of the worst metas in Splatoon history, the Crab Tank meta, it still feels better than all of Splatoon 2's metas have thus far. So that's a good thing, um, or at least the Splatoon 2 current meta that exists. So, yeah, Splatoon 3 in terms of gameplay is great. And in terms of what was there at launch, in terms of content, was phenomenal. We have every single weapon in the game, at least one kit for it. Even if the main weapon, even if the kit for the weapon sucks, hey, it's there. In Splatoon 2, that did not happen. <laughs> uh... You had to wait like months just to play like a Hydra Splatling as an example, I guess. I don't know a specific weapon. I'm just pulling one, you know, randomly. Um, so yeah. And then on top of that, the addition to Salmon Run make the mode feel like an actual mode and not like a early version of Salmon Run. And uh, everything just feels complete, even if it isn't, except for these things. So Splatoon 3 is still a great game. It won multiplayer the game of the year. And... Um, at the end of the day, everything I'm talking about here in terms of issues that this video is about is just uh, smaller things, I guess. Except they're a bit bigger than smaller things. I don't know. You get the point. <laughs> I'm going to leave you at that and uh, hope you all enjoyed this podcast style of a, of a video. Uh, bye.